In this episode, we're going to talk about the Meteor Session object. When I first saw the Session object, it was a little confusing because it actually has nothing to do with cookies or what we traditionally think of as being Session. In Meteor, the Session object is just a simple key value store. And it also happens to be a reactive data source. In the episode on reactivity and contexts, we built up our own simple reactive data source. And the session is an example of a reactive data source as well. To get a better feel for it, let's just look at the source code and look at the three key methods. The session object is located in the session package of the Meteor source code. And if we open up the session.js file of the session package, we can take a look at the three methods that we'll be using. Set, get, and equals. If we look at the implementation of these methods, we can see that it looks very similar to the reactive data source that we created in the context episode. You can see in the get method that we're adding the current context. And in the set method, if a value changes for a particular key, Meteor is invalidating those contexts. And likewise, in the equals method, we're using the current context. So let's jump to the browser and see how to use these methods before moving on to creating a user interface that uses the session. Here in the browser, we see the standard application that's created when you create a new Meteor app. Let's cycle through the session methods that we just looked at. You can call session.set with a key and a value, session.get with a key, and session dot equals to test equality of a key with another value. Now let's use the session object in an actual user interface. I've created a simple application and what I want to be able to do is when I click on a menu item I want the menu item to highlight and I also want this label to change to reflect the selected item. So if I click on 2 I see two, the label changed to two, and if I click on three, the label changes to three, and so on. Before looking at how to do this in Meteor, let's take a look at how we might do it in jQuery. Now I should point out that jQuery and Meteor aren't incompatible frameworks. They can be used together, but I'm using jQuery here to illustrate a different type of programming. And down here I have a static HTML file that I've opened directly in the browser. I've included a style sheet, a local copy of jQuery, and our JavaScript file which we'll be looking at above. In the body I have an unordered list with a bunch of list items named 1 through 4 that you can see over in the browser. Let's take a look at the JavaScript to do what we want. If you've used jQuery this should all look very familiar to you. But I want to point out a couple of things so that we can see the difference when we create this same application in Meteor. You can see on, on around line 12 that we have an event handler where we're listening to the click event on our anchor elements. And then within that event handler, we call some functions, prevent default and page.setSelectedItem. Within the setSelectedItem method, we remove the selected class from any of the other selected rows so that we don't get orange, uh, the orange row showing up more than once. And then we set a class on the selected row, on the clicked on row, and then we go ahead and set the label using the items HTML. So this is an example of imperative code. We're listening for events and then telling the page what it should do in response to those events. With Meteor, instead, we'll use reactive programming where we listen to changes on a particular data item, and then the UI will respond automatically. Let's take a look. We'll start off by creating a new Meteor app. And then we'll change into the app that we just created, and let's add the jQuery package. Great, now we'll have jQuery available to us. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the default HTML. 
and I'm going to cut and paste in some HTML that I, I have already written. And it's very straightforward. In the body, we have a container which then renders a menu template. And within our menu template, we have uh, an unordered list and we use the each method of handlebars to iterate over an items collection, which we'll define in a second. And for each item, we're gonna render a menu item template. And then you can see on line 17 that we have a div for the selected label. So let's jump over to the JavaScript and take a look. In our JavaScript file, the first thing I'll do is check whether or not we're on the client. Next, I want to be able to define an items helper on the menu template. So to do that, I'll call template.menu.helpers and pass in a map of helpers, the first one being called items. The items helper will just return an array of string values, one through four. Next, let's respond to the click event on the anchor elements. Since the anchor elements are defined in the menu item template, I'll call template.menuitem.events and pass in a map of events. I'm only going to listen for the click event, so I'll say the click event on the anchor element. And the event handler will take two parameters. The first is the event object itself, and the second is the template that this object, that this event was fired from. And within this method, I will just do two things. One is to prevent the default behavior of the event. And then second, I'll call the set method on the session object and set the selected item to the value of the data context for this row. So let's look at what, what's happening here for a second. Over on the left, we call the handlebars each helper with the items collection, which we've defined up here. And then for each item, we render the menu item template and we'll pass in each one of these as the this context. So here in the menu item template, this will be equal to each one of these items as we go through the iteration, one, two, three, and four. So over in session.set, the reason that we call value of is because JavaScript is going to convert these string values into a string object, and we need to call value of to get the scalar value of the string because that's what the Meteor session is expecting. Okay, next let's create the selected item helper on the menu template. This helper will just see whether or not um, the session contains a selected item, and if so, just return it. And if, it's, if it doesn't contain it, we'll just return none selected. Now the beauty of this is because over here in our template, we use uh, handlebars with the selected item helper and because Meteor templates are reactive, anytime this key changes in the session object, this part will be re-rendered without us having to do anything. So in our click event handler, every time we call set and we change the value of the key, the selected item key to something different, this HTML will update automatically using the Meteor live HTML update feature which is just a fancy way of saying that the user interface is reacting to a reactive data source. But there's one last thing I'd like to do. As you can see, I'm using an item class helper, which we haven't defined yet, but I'd like the class to change depending upon whether this, this row is actually selected or not. So let's write the JavaScript for that. Let's define a helper on the menu item template called item class. 
I'll call the helpers method and pass in a map of helpers. The item class helper will check the session by calling the equals method to see whether or not the selected item is equal to this row's value. If it is, we'll return a class of selected. And if it's not, we'll just return an empty string. Now the beauty of doing this is that the session.equals method is reactive too, as we saw from looking at the source code. And so if this selected item key uh, value changes at all, this class will be updated automatically. And so we've just rewritten our jQuery example using reactive code and Meteor. So let's see if it works in the browser. Great, so far it seems to be working. I have my four list items rendering properly and the selected label defaults to none selected. And then if I come over here and I click on an item, the class is applied dynamically and I get the orange background. And the label is also updated. It's worth noting that when data underlying data changes, Meteor is only updating the parts of the DOM that need to be updated. This is a really cool piece of technology and it's one of the benefits of using Meteor templates in combination with a reactive data source like Session. If you want to learn more about the Meteor Session object, you can go to docs.meteor.com and scroll down to the Session section and you can read about the methods that we just looked at and also read about how you can use Session to control state in your user interface.